Hi guys, my name is Eliza and this is Eliza's Bookshelf. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. Today I'm going to go over my BIPOC pick of September. I started this in August. Basically I pick a book that features a BIPOC author. The first book I picked in August, what was it? What did I read? Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> My memory sucks. Uh, the August pick was Paper Names by Susie Luo and I loved it so much. Um, the pick for September was The Best We Could Do by T. Bui. It is a graphic novel, basically biography, of this woman whose family immigrated from Vietnam and she was born there too. I think she came over with her family when she was in less than 10 years old. But anyways, um, shout out to Melody because I found out about this book through her and I was like, this is such a great book. Oh my gosh, I'm lisping because I'm wearing my retainers. But anyways, I was thinking this is such a great book to read with my family because a lot of these things I think my mom went through in her lifetime. Let's see, she was born in 53 and so she may have been about 20 years old when this family went through what they went through in Vietnam. So I thought it would be such a great book to read together. I've been hyping it up. Um, I No one wanted to read it with me, right? I'm like the only reader in our family, but I wanted my sister, my brother, my mom to read it together and um, obviously no one's picking it up. So I finally just bought it for my mom and she has no choice but to read it. And so she actually started it. She's on chapter two or something. There's only 10 chapters. So that is a good chunk and she doesn't really read in English. So she's giving it a good shot, which I am so grateful for. Um, because I feel like there's a lot of lessons or stories that we can all benefit from. But yeah, I finally finished it today. I kind of put it off because I knew it was going to be a little bit one of my harder reads. When I read, I I read to kind of escape reality like I read fantasy I read murders and stuff like that um yeah so I knew that was gonna hit a little bit closer to home which it did I think at the end I cried a little um but yeah it's basically about T. Bui herself she talks about like her family her siblings but my, but mainly her mom and her dad and about their story in Vietnam basically how they came to be the person they are and so it starts out with her giving birth to her I think it was her son and she's just worried about like how she's gonna bring up her own family and so she talks about her dad her mom who I think they're still together but they're kind of like a weird relationship type of thing yeah I can relate to that but honestly I thought this was gonna be more about like her mom's or her dad's struggles in the United States after they came there because it started out with her um, delivering her baby in the US. But it was more so of her parents' um, struggles in Vietnam itself, which w after I finished the book, I read the synopsis. I was like, oh, duh, it says, it says this in the synopsis itself. So it was cool because I got to learn more about Vietnamese history. Yes, I admit I'm very ignorant in history of all kinds, but I got to learn more about Vietnam history, the Vietnam War, um, like the famous photo that was taken in the Vietnam War and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, I thought it would be such a good read for my mom because she probably experienced a lot of this firsthand, like getting, um, trying to escape a dangerous place, getting to all these refugee camps. And I think she said she went to Cambodia, all, all these different places, right? Before she came to the US. So yeah, so I think that was a great thing to learn and talk about with my mom. But I feel like I related a lot to Ji Bui herself because being a daughter from refugee parents and then also having your own family being scared of passing on the traumas that you got from your parents you know I feel like a lot of people can relate to that but yeah um oh my gosh it's just so crazy because when I was reading through this book I read it on Libby I'm gonna buy myself a copy because I love it so much but when I was reading it through Libby app I was taking pictures and just like sending it to my siblings of things we can relate to and it's just like are all Vietnamese father is the same. It was like, <laughs> let me see. Let me see if I can find it. But basically it was like her talking about her father and how her father has pictures of naked women on the walls and how he tells scary stories of Vietnam and stuff like that, ghost stories, um, trying to be fun and stuff like that, but actually really haunting you as a child. And I was like, I sent to my sister because I was like, I remember visiting my dad at his apartment and it's just like a bunch of pictures of naked women from calendars. It's just so weird. Like, let me know if, if you guys grew up with this, but um, it seems to be a Vietnamese dad thing. 
Uh, yeah, so it's very crazy. There was one part in the book that I thought was funny because in the refugee camps, they were talking about how some people kind of just reinvented themselves. They were talking about how some people change their names or their age. And some people would say, if I'm 10 years younger, I'll find a job easier. Or another person would say, if I'm 10 years older, I'll retire earlier. And it's so funny because my partner would talk about his father who did the opposite. He was talking, he was pretending like he was like a few years younger so that he can, he thought it would be an easier time in the US, but actually it takes longer for him to retire. So it's just so interesting the things that refugees go through all together. This part made me sad and this one I did send to my friend because we talk a lot about like our family trauma, the things that we went through with our parents and stuff like that, trying to understand where they came from but also being affected in a negative way because of their history. But this one says, they taught us to be respectful, to take care of one another, and to do well in school. Those were the intended lessons. The unintentional ones comes from their unexercised demons and from the habits they formed over so many years of trying to survive. <laughs> my gosh. I talked about this a lot with my therapist a long time ago because I understand my mom, like, the, the book is called The Best We Could Do, which in itself is just very heartbreaking because I know that my parents no matter like the faults or whatever that they had bringing us up, I just know like they did what they could at the moment in time with whatever they knew, right? And so when it says from the habits they formed over so many years of trying to survive, I know that things were hard back then for them and we don't know exactly what they went through, but they did the best they could and it's just a miracle that they are both here in the US. It's just so crazy, right? Not everyone survives this stuff, but Oh my god, this stuff really hits hard. Um, what else? The ending of this book, oh my god. I didn't cry until the end of this book. Finally, when I got to the end, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna make this tear-free, but then the end, I was like sobbing. And I sent this to my friend too, because we both have children, like almost the same age. She has a daughter who is the same age as my daughter, but my son is older than her son. Her son is like one something, my son is five. So a little bit different age. But I feel like we always think the same things and it's just at the end of the book, it kind of wraps it all up, right? About her becoming a mom. She said, what has worried me since having my own child was whether I would pass along some gene for sorrow or unintentionally inflict damage I could never undo. And I don't think this is just for like children of refugees. I think this can be relatable for moms everywhere. Like you're always scared of doing something wrong, raising your child. I don't know. I always talk about this to my husband. Like I'm always scared that we're going to do something wrong and we're going to, you know, like scar them for life. But he always tells me, you know, you just gotta learn to be there for them. I don't know, my husband always talks me down from a cliff, but yeah, I love this book so much. Um, I mean, not necessarily, hopefully I didn't really like spoil everything. I just feel like if you're interested reading through her whole journey about getting information from her parents is just a nice read to kind of understand. But anyways, yes, I love this book so much. I'm going to get a physical copy too once I kind of recover from my September spendings. Um, yeah, September was a wild spending month. Um, actually, I did a little bit better, but just because I budgeted myself, I knew where to spend and not to spend, so I, I don't know. Anyways, I will definitely buy myself a copy and um, my sister started reading the book too, so I'm excited to see what she thinks. And then my brother, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if he's going to read it, but I do hope he does. Um, but yes, so that was my September BIPOC pick. For October, I am so excited because it actually releases October. It's coming out October 3rd in the US. I'm not sure if other places have different release dates, but basically um, I have been looking forward to this book the whole year. It is Hurricane Wars by Thea Guanzan. I hope I love it because I bought a bunch of different editions. So I have to keep track of this. Okay, let's let's go over it. I have Dazzling Shops, Barnes & Nobles, Satisfiction, Fox & Wit, Waterstones, and it's going to be Fairy Loots October. So I have six editions coming in. I hope I love it. So I'm going to be reading that for October and I will post my thoughts up on the last Friday of October. But yeah, I'm so excited. I think I already have what I am picking for November and December might be a little bit up in the air, but if you have any recs for me for BIPOC authors, drop it down below. I've been focusing more on Asian authors, but I'm open to anything. Um, yeah, I hope you like this mini review. Hopefully it's not too spoilery, but 
I just wanted to give my thoughts and yeah, I need to go to sleep because, well, I need to pack and then go to sleep because we are leaving early tomorrow. We are going to Oregon for my best friend's wedding. I'm so excited. Um, this was my best friend from high school. I met her when I was, what is high school? 14 years old. So I've known her for about two decades of my life, if I'm doing math right. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Can't believe she's getting married. Uh, so crazy. But yeah, after that, so there's the wedding and and after that, we're going straight up to Washington because my husband's sister lives there and um, we just want to visit her. But yeah, I'm so excited. This weekend is going to be great. I'm going to bring a lot of books. I'm probably going to squeeze in about two or three more books, hopefully. Maybe two, just two. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.